you. Thank you for. Um, thank you very much for the invitation. Um, are you guys listening to me? I'm trying to. I'm gonna put my microphone here just in case when I'm gonna play. I'm gonna. Are you listening? It's okay. Yeah, this is better. When you're a little closer to the mic, I can hear really yeah. clearly. When I when I'm gonna play, I, I put that uh, for. I'm using only only one today. Normally, I use two, one for voice, and uh, this is the the step for the quarantine. And we have to learn how to to understand the the mic positions and everything. But uh, anyway, I'm very happy to be here, and uh, I hope my English is is fine. <laughs> uh, and uh, anyway, let's start uh, playing, if you don't mind. I, I didn't play much today. And uh, I'd like to do my warm up with you guys. I'm trying to do a very um, simple one, but effective one. Uh, normally, when I start my day, I always think in my, in have my sound very clear in my in my mind before i start my playing uh you know i had some troubles with my playing recently not big problems but things that i i can easily say that probably i i did some mistakes in my in my approach uh one one day i wake up and started to think too much about technique and uh this for me was the mistake uh of course we we need to think about technique we need to understand how to 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 do the things but uh i my 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 i grew up with teaching saying all the time we had to sing we, we had to sing in your head before playing and this for me was always the the main thing but once i started to to, to think too technical I started to think too much here, and uh, this for me was was the big mistake. You know, uh, first of all, when I start my day, I like to to start with simple glissandos, because that simple glissandos makes makes me also uh, give the space for the air moving into the the instrument, but also it's the easiest way to sing through the instrument, in my opinion, and to have that sensation that I'm trying to explain. Uh, the first thing is I always think in the sound straight in the bell. I don't think how to produce it. For me, it's the opposite. I sound first and then I start to think about it. If something is not good here, it's because the sound is not great. And normally, for me at least, it's this works. If this if it doesn't sound good because something is is it's it's not good here, but if sound good, if sound great, it's because probably it's because something it's it's way in, in their way. Okay, uh, so I'm going to start with simple, simple, simple glissandos. Uh, let me show you first. I, when I'm I'm going to put here, and then I I try to. <laughs> okay, the first glissando is. It's F two E, and I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna move from uh, first and second position with without tongue, okay. <laughs> It's simple. We do that uh, before we do it together. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna explain some things here. Um, since the beginning, I'm singing and I'm doing uh as much music as i can so in this exercise here don't think this as mechanical i'm trying to catch the f from the first to the second note and then for the first note again try to sing in that so create atmosphere make a line on it okay and uh okay i i was thinking too technical nowadays i'm thinking very musical in a very musical approach so for me first of all i think okay how how I can do music from the first for the very first note. So my my goal is has the best sound um, out of my bell as I can without any effort. Okay. With that said, I yes I'm gonna I'm gonna think yes my air has to be lighter, easy, uh, nimble. 
uh, not a effortless sound. I need to have there synchronize it with the, the lips and make the vibration. Everything is there in, in terms in, in technical speak. But for me, it's easier to think. Think about the sound first. Think about to have the best sound as you can in your head, listen to your sound before you start playing and then make music with it. It's that clear? It's it makes sense. It's okay. It's my. It's not. I'm not saying that this is a. Everything that I'm gonna say. It's works for me. It's not absolute truth. Okay. It's just the way that I'm. I'm thinking. Okay. Here you go. One, two, three. Uh. simple isn't it it's oh sorry <laughs> it's really simple isn't it uh next I'm, i was still uh doing some english sandals you know what i'm gonna share that uh, it's easier to explain um this is my warm-up i hope you guys are seeing that okay let me just check one thing here in the chat right uh, this is my warm up. I can send you guys. It's in Portuguese. I wish I had the, the English version of it, of it but I, I didn't make any big uh, f uh, statements. I, I think Sergio <laughs> I understand everything that is written here. <laughs> but it's it's really simple. This is uh, Ellison, uh, uh Glissando. I, I learned it with him. It's, glis it's said here Glissando in our notes from the if. Uh, if flat uh, low E flat, I use uh, uh, fake notes. Uh, I forgot in English. It's um, a note without the F attachment. Okay, uh, but but it's it's really simple. I use that because I think you guys realize it, that I I don't start with uh, uh, mouthpiece. This is one of the things that I uh, I, I I already answered that question. Because uh, I, I told you guys that I, I was too uh, uh, focused in the technical and especially in the in the embouchure. So I discovered that I start I, I was put all the efforts in the in the lip vibrations with the 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 buzzing uh, practice. I'm not against that, but I discovered that for me uh, I don't need that much, and actually I don't need anything at all. <laughs> to be honest, I really respect who needs that, and uh, I, I appreciate. I have students that I, I I pass that as a medicine, you know, as as the correction. I, I think it's it's a good thing to do, but for me, I uh, it's easier to do glissandos and do the the fake notes instead of make buzzing, you know. Um, of course, I have the ability to do that, and normally when I do this, I try to to copy the the sensation of singing uh, uh, by the way everything that i'm saying here it's related to the sensation that i have when i'm singing so i'm gonna try to show you that for you guys uh, when i'm singing i'm feeling uh really relaxed he here in the body the tension if i would say there is some tension it's here in the vocal cords because of course the air is it's it's passed through the vocal cords and makes the sound go, uh, 
go out. My voice, my freak bad voice. Sorry for the, the bad language. <laughs> but, but, uh, but, but my, my, my point, main point is that I try to copy that sensation, sensation of freedom in the body and the tension. If we need to have the tension, it's chin up. So when I do the buzzing, I try to cop that as well. As you can see, it's really simple. But what, with that said, when I play in the, the trombone, I have the same sensation. So that's why I don't, I don't need to do in the, the buzzing. I go straight to the instrument because I do the, the, the connection, the straight connection in between the natural playing, which is singing, with the playing itself. Is that, is that, is that okay? And the fake notes is the way that I still work in my embouchure because we play in between partials. You play in between partials. And in my sensation, I use a lot of effort of the middle of the embouchure. So for me, uh, as the way of feeling, feeling the, the vibration. Okay. So let's do it. I do very, very, okay. Okay. All right. Let's, let's do it. And I'm going to, okay. One, two. Sorry, sorry, glist all the notes, okay? Very, very uh, smooth. Uh, A flat, please. Three and here I normally do more but I, I like to use more the time and um, it's it's funny because I, I I'm doing that exercise in the expression day in the ending I was very worried about my position here and um, sometimes when I I do this exercise and feeling weird I do the simple things I put the instrument in the stand and singing, the, especially the part that I'm I, I'm struggling with. Like uh, I I felt my my sound not good in the uh, in the E. Uh, I sing like this, and then I try to repeat the sensation. Uh. in the part that I'm not happy with but I always I try to repeat that with the uh, uh, trying to go in the simple as I can 
I never, never go to the, okay, I need to do something with the body, uh, with the, I'm sorry, with the, the lips and with the tongue. I, I know, I, let's think about the sound first. The sound leads everything that it has to, to, to do uh, with your technique. So if sounds great, okay, we, we can move on. But if we have some issues with the sound, let's do what we have to, to change. Okay, it's for me. It's it's it's. I'm not saying that's the the way of play. It's not absolute truth, but for me, it works. Think like this, you know. Uh, works. Think first in the sound, and then I do the rest. Sounds leads the technique, and of course, above the sound, muse leads everything. So I like this exercise as well. Um, let's do. A couple of notes of that, okay. Uh, this is the last one. Uh, it's, it's a ton of repeater, you know. I like to practice this exercise with the most relaxed air and then try to cap and keep the intonation uh, and uh, very consistent, you know. Uh, I like to think this in, um, um, here in Brazil, uh, we, we call uh, artificial tongue it's legato tongue you know and uh, uh i like to to do that and this is the first exercise that i use tongue and i like to use tongue uh very gently for the first time in my in my warm up because um uh, maybe uh because of my 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 first language i have the tendency to to work too much in the the consonants so uh instead of thinking too much in ta 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 i like to I, I like to think la 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 and give space for the tongue and the air be synchronized because we are everything that we are talking about here it's about synchronization between basics so the air goes to the lips vibrating it and when you have the the the, the tongue we have to be out together and also with the slide we're going to uh, explain that everything has to be connected all the movements has to start in the same uh, uh, in, in the same time okay so um also this exercise uh, teach me one thing about articulation uh, that for me it's again related to the listen your sound found first and then we change the things uh, when i sing for example i'm going to sing this uh, As you can see, it's really simple. The movement, it's really small, I would say, for me at least. And it's, it's really uh, not that difficult. When you play, we have, I always had the tendency to use too much tongue because you need to, to reach the, <laughs> the sound of the bell. But for me, uh, when I listen my sound singing, I don't felt any uh, extra help of my airstream to project the sound. The sound is projecting there. Okay. Of course, I'm not. Uh, I'm not a good singer. Uh, I'm just um, singing. I'm, I'm not using a lot of uh, effort to make this MF uh, a mezzoforte or forte, but I'm trying to just uh, singing out of my my mouth. This is the way that I'm playing as well. So uh, with that said, I don't I don't force my sound when I'm use the 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 articulation. So and wait, I just felt my sound into. Uh, 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 going in front of me in that direction not in that direction when you do you try to think too much in the articulation at least me when i think too much in the articulation the tennis is be more in that direction you know very uh, lazy bean sound something like this you know so it, it and this is one thing that i try to avoid as much as i can that makes sense. So with that said, always uh, I try to relate to the, the natural 
of our, ourselves. I'm not using, I, I put here the syllab, syllabus that I use, it's la, 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 la. But nowadays I'm using more the approach to, okay, try to copy what you do when you sing. La, 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 la. It sounds a legato. Uh, legato tone, it's okay, depending of the articulation that are, you are using. Of course, there is some articulation. Of course, you cannot sound uh, legato tone playing ta ta ta. But in the in the range of uh, syllables that you try to think, think first in the sound and try to change the sound, and then you're gonna see the the differences in your tone. Okay, so let's do some couple of notes of, of this exercise and. Uh, Try to be as musical as you can, okay? Singing, singing, make phrase. One, two, one, two, three, Do you guys have some questions? Um, you know, it's. I I have one question. How's the volume? How's the volume of my voice? Is it okay? It's okay. Okay, great. Um, I really appreciate your approach to 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 connecting it to singing. Um, and and you talk about uh, you don't want to get you know too technical. Um, a lot of people practice with a metronome. A lot of people practice with drone pitches and with tuners. Um, and thus far, you've just been singing. Um, but at some point, we obviously need to have good time and we need to have good pitch. So how do you think about combining or integrating and using metronomes and drones and all that stuff in the warm up? Do you just play, just sing, and then you go later and do that? Or do you ever, you know, put it in there? No, it's an excellent question. I'm not doing right now <laughs> because, um, to be honest, my, my cell phone is not good right now with the, the metronome, but I use metronome since from the beginning. Normally, it's funny because it's a masterclass, you know, you have to use that. But uh, when I do masterclasses like that, I, I do the opposite. I try to not use the metronome and try to, to, to use my internal timing, you know? Although I use the metronome and, and the tenor, all the time uh actually i'm used more the droner nowadays than the the tuner to be honest uh i use i use the tonal energy uh, up but i don't know i'm gonna put that but i don't i don't think it's it's because it's my 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 speaker it's it's cracking now i don't want to use that but uh and i i think yes. i think we're fine for today i was just curious what you know like when you're by yourself you know how you view it no 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 when i'm sp i'm i'm sp when I'm practicing, I use metronome sync from the beginning. I use everything. Actually, I think for the I think in the first uh, notes of the day, you uh, of course the first notes I try to to play for for myself. I, 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 the glissandos normally I, I do without metronome, to be honest, frankly, for, especially the first one. The second one I try to choose the metronome because I I, I like to have the some goals uh, like play in 50, 48, and try to do this in a one single breathing. And it's about, about control. But I think the drone, the drone uh, is, is, is there since from the beginning, since from the beginning. I try to do that, you know. I, I mean, for me, it's, it's funny because I have the, the perfect pitch. So I don't need much the, 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 the drone. But I still playing, I still playing. Actually, actually, it's, it's 
I'm going to um, stretch a little bit your, your question. In my daily routine, I mean, I did my warm up and then I, I practiced a bit of scales. And especially in, in the scales, I use a lot of droner and metronome. A lot, but a lot. Like, I like to do the interval exercises and very, very slowly and try to, to listen every single note. I did a lot in the last year because I was, I changed my instrument, I've changed my instrument and I need to understand exactly where is the position. So, but it's, I, I, I do, and I, I mean, uh, it's, it's there. We need to have the, the good tem a good timing, a good tempo. We, we need to have a very good in intonation. I think this is a, a tone, tune, and, t and tenor, and, and tempo, sorry, tone, tuner, and tempo. It's like absolute truth. We have to be a great sound with a good intonation and a good, a good tempo, in a good tempo. So this is, it's important. Anyway, but uh, okay. Since I'm not using the metronome, I try to do as musical as I can. I, I think this is it's quite uh, 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 opposite of my my answer, but it's uh, sometimes you need to be free. Sometimes, sometimes you need to 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 need to be very uh, Stravinsky mode. Da, 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 da. But sometimes let's be more Debussy. Let's be more. Um, Havel, you know, it's it's important to have both sides of the of the word, to, be, in my opinion. Let me just see if you have more questions here. I'm sorry, guys. I I am. Oh, no, you don't have to oh, worry okay. about ch checking the chat because we're gonna watch that, and so if someone is asking a question, okay. we're gonna jump in and say hey. <laughs> so you could just. Uh, just do your thing. We got you covered. Don't worry, buddy. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. No, it's normally I do this for myself. And sometimes I'm <laughs> OK. The, now we're going to go for the flexibilities. You know, I like very much this exercise in Hamilton. Uh, although I'm not do this right now, I'm going to do the local one. OK, uh, I'm not do much, just a couple of positions uh, because there is some special things in, in front for us. Um, but I like to, from, since from the beginning, I like to do the combination between the, the, the forces, which means articulations. So uh, we did a very light articulation right now. So we do legato and then staccato. So ta, 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 ta. In my opinion, we have to be able to change uh, the articulation in, in, and keep the health of the embouchure, I think. And I, I like to do that exercise because, because of it, because I, I have some problems with my articulation. My articulation is not my best, uh, isn't my best uh, uh, ba uh, basic. I need to always be in connection with my articulation. Uh, so uh, this exercise helped me a lot. Okay, let's do it a little bit later. A one, two, three. <laughs>
think this is a, a exercise one of the hardest one because oops sorry 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 i forgot <laughs> uh because you know at least for me these are uh, range that's for me it was neglect neglected i i did a lot of high notes and low notes <laughs> in my i tried to have the best and high notes as i can and i had and i have that the low notes is there as well but the middle range and sometimes it's neglected for us and actually we play a lot of that <laughs> i think most of our players playing is that that's why i like to do this exercise you know um and also the connection, uh, uh, the changing between articulation, it's really hard to do, and for, at least for me, because the thing is, is stay with the same uh, quality of air, keep the embouchure working, and then you change the articulation, but not change the essential embouchure, which means you don't need to have the embouchure for articulation and embouchure for, uh, uh, for legato, you know? I think we change things, I, I, the articulation is more related to the to the definition of the notes and that I'm trying to, to, to think that it's, this is for me important. The definition for me, again, it's the way that I'm listening to my sound. So if it's, it's there, it's there. I don't need to think, think too much here. It's, it's maybe funny or even complicated to understand, but I, I try to, okay, listen to my sound. If it sounds great, I don't need to worry about it. if not sounds sound good okay it's time to change some things and then i try to to change here okay so the the following ex exercise is almost the same i like to start in a middle range and then go high and low we did the low already now i'm gonna go for this exercise here i i i like to i call that exercise as uh diagonal flexibility which is the movement we do a lot of uh, horizontal vertical i like to do in the in the diagonal position and this is the first exercise that i do with it okay it's really simple again uh but for me it works a lot with the with the slide technique it's the first time i would say of course the, the second glissando that we did we use a, a bit of slide movement but it is the first time that we can think about it and synchronize the movement of the lips, uh, the air lips, and the slide movement all together. So, the way I'm thinking about the slide technique, it's it's really simple. Uh, I like to think this as relaxed. My my right arm has to be relaxed as I can, but um, as precise as I can. So, I don't think. Uh, for me, I like to. I I I'm married with a, a violin player, and she plays. In a, 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 he her bow it's amazing, so I try to to copy that that sensation when I'm playing. I'm trying to copy that sensation of 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 a violin playing. So for me, it's it's as late as possible but as precise as i can so i i move with the note with the note that's why again in this exercise the tempo it's really important for for slide technique uh metronome it's really important in my opinion because if you put everything in tempo it's going to be there without any effort okay again we don't we're gonna don't don't use the the metronome right now but please play with the metronome okay this for this Right. Letter A. One, two, here it. Yes, and then we can go for the next page here. 
letter B. On this, I'm going to use the combination between uh, the diagonal uh, flexibility and vertical flexibility. Okay, so. Okay, one, two, here. <laughs> Okay, just to be clear, in that point, we are very warm up. Okay, we we did. I think I, I think the the three first exercises, I'm feeling that just fine, just ready for for playing the the rest of my day. You know, and from that point, I'm just uh, uh, practicing my favorite exercise. This is my my thing here i'm doing my um practice maintenance routine and actually nowadays i i, I was uh and spoke with david and jason before the the, the master class start and I, i'm doing the things very diff very different from that um this week for example i did the glissandos <laughs> and uh the, the the three exercise i would say that it's 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 there all the time some variations and then I, I i i went straight to the uh album book and did the uh, everything that i i'm doing uh, uh, related to flexibility to staccato the, uh, articulation uh, scales i did from album book and uh, i think this is it, this is important to say i i i did the warm-up and then I, I i did the rest of my maintenance routine and uh, exercise that I need to work in things in the album book. It's not what you do, it's how you do it that makes the difference. You know, I think this, we have to be aware where you are, uh, what are you, what is the main goal of the exercise? What are you searching for doing that exercise? Okay. Right. Uh, let's do letter C. In this case, we have the, the diagonal, vertical, and then you put the the D flat here, just to to put the a little bit of harmony. This exercise as well is a very good exercise of of intonation. Uh, not because you need to listen what you are playing, and uh, and also as again musicality, you can phrase that, phrase that. Uh, because it's like you can think about highest points like and make that that difference of harmony more um, uh, showing more that it's it's up to you use your imagination when you you're practicing okay so uh, let us see one simple so after that i am a, a very lip slurs player if i had if i have to say i, I like to play more than the usual <laughs> but if i have time uh, i do as much as i can of crescendos of uh, because i like to work my sound i of course uh, my weakest point is articulation. I do a lot of articulation, not only uh, articulation in that case, it's the way that you are using the, the, 
the movement of, of the tongue. It could be legato tongue, could it be detaché, could it be staccato, I mean, it doesn't matter. But I, I think it's it's important to cover as much as you uh, uh, cover as much colors as you can your playing. Even in your warm up, I try to do that. Okay. So in that case, I'm gonna do the this exercise here. I like very much. It's uh, the Lange, uh, Steve Lange, the second from the Boston Symphony may uh, do that. Uh, it's really simple. Uh, I'm not do use do a lot of positions here. But that's uh, for me. It's the first time that I use a little bit of jump. Okay. Let's do some couple of positions. One, two, one. <laughs> so on you can go more um, I'm just if, if it's okay I just pass through what I'm doing and uh, just to to play everything cover as much as we can so the first the, the next uh, exercise is it's a less basic slurs uh, I like this one and uh, because I, I never told that but I like to work uh, in my normal work I like to work with the entire instrument which is, I use the, the F dash mat, even for, for uh, uh, doing exercise like that. We, we gonna, I'm gonna show you, we're gonna do a little bit of that. When you do, uh, you do the, the sixth position, then we go for the second position with the, with the valve and play everything with the valve. I do this with the previous exercise as well. Um, the reason of that, it's because I'm je a little bit jealous of these bass trombones <laughs> because they use two valves. And uh, I think this is one of the revolutionary uh, inventions for the trombone because you can use the positions here. You can do uh, as much as we can in terms of, of um, playing in, 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 in one, one two three positions as you can the connections it's great of course uh it's also important to say that with my students uh, even if you have the, the the f attachment i like to work at least two semesters without using the f attachment it's funny because i i i, I used to 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 give them their their ability to to understand how to move the slide as and be precise with that going from the first to the sixth position yes we need to have this this uh, uh but with the with that said with that cover we can go for this the the valve technique and uh for me this like uh, to play in in, in the the MR register exercise like this is in a kind of of um uh, imitation of it in the tenor trauma okay so let's do this exercise here And uh, it's really hard to make this 
pop up without being forced uh my my tip for it it's don't change uh anything in terms of air even with the big uh the big tube because we i think we can agree that you you add more to with, with the valve even playing so in this in the second position with the valve it's like playing the system in the seventh position so uh, uh but i don't change my way of make the sound so the air has to be freely and easy as we can okay so and then we go for one of my favorites <laughs> this exercise it's it's really hard i I don't I don't do that often I I think it's because it's it's really hard to do that but today I'm gonna do that because I need uh, tomorrow I'm gonna play um, iced and musical in my church and there is uh, some jumps there I didn't notice that realize that before and um, and then it's 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 funny because music uh, uh, musical broad uh, repertoire it's, it's really hard to play sometimes and uh we, and uh, i have some it's not big jumps i would say it's it's more related to lange style than top of the exercise style but it's it's i mean i have to play something like this sometimes and then i i go i went to oh, like something big jumps like this i'm talking about really big jumps but i had time to like set my embouchure but it uh, with even though I, I like to do this exercise with you guys okay uh, um okay i'm gonna do very slowly even for me <laughs> I, I think it's a lot of times don't don't do that Okay, let's do one more. Let's do one once more. Now we understood the exercise and then we can can do the entire exercise. But yeah. exercise in the entire exercise it's really hard you know and I, I, I like this this kind of exercise there is one from a Brasilia um, trombone player it's I mean I think you guys know him it's Gilberto Galeaggi it's his, his name in, uh, after a competition from ITA so it's I mean I think he's the most n knowledge trombone player uh, in in terms of pedagogy here in Brazil, uh, it's a, he was a very good trombone player, very good trombone player, and uh, he has a, a book. It's it's not uh, uh, printed, but he has a book of uh, warm up routine. That the first exercise, one, uh, the last exercise of the first uh, section with flexibility is something like this. <laughs> kind of jumps <laughs> and uh, I like very much to do this especially when I have to play something very wicked and um, uh, and, and there's no limit for me in terms of uh, doing this kind of a week a weekend exercise weekend slurs if I have to do I, I, I need to do once a music that I had big jumps I do I, I, I use that same exercise and put the F on it something like this and uh i i think it's it's not to do every every day <laughs> but 
I, I like to, to do it when I have to play something with that kind of style of playing. And, you know, my, my practice is always related for what I'm, I'm going to play. It's, it's obvious to say that, but sometimes we forget that we do a lot of um, uh, single tone, but we need to play uh, double tone sometimes. <laughs> and uh, and uh, it's, uh, there's a, a quote from Arturo Sandoval, uh, he, 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 he told me once in a master class that we need to play um, staccato, but you are uh, playing flexibility all day, day, all day long because you like it. Oh, okay. You cannot play staccato because you didn't practice that. So you need to practice what you, you need to, to play. Okay. So uh, this, the next exercise, I'm, I'm not, I, I'm going to skip that. It's, a, it's really, it's not that big, difficult. It's exercise that we do. I'm going to do the, 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 the final just to see as exercise that we do in the out positions it's also uh, um, um, diagonal flexibility but with a lot more more standard <laughs> to do that because yes <laughs> yes yeah guys if you want i can do we can do but i i like i like this exercise because uh especially here in brazil the, the guys doesn't like to to play um, the connection between positions like uh, going up in another position it's always here uh, one two three and two two and three and I like to to have the all the combinations of the instrument. Uh, when I once I play the the bourgeois concerto, then I play the third movement. I use a lot of the fifth position, sixth position. Okay, because it's easier to do things there. You know, um, I don't know why I can I can show some like for example. <laughs> position now i try to challenge myself uh with the six positions but it's it's like it's it's good to do this kind of a, a, a combinations it's it's healthy for the the quality of the legato of the articulation at itself okay um and then we do some exercises with the articulation um i think it's gonna be the last one we're gonna do after that i do scales arpeggios i i like to do uh in a maximum of playing, uh, I, 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 I try to do uh, four or five minutes of sessions. It's the maximum that I'm, I'm, I, I'm with the instrument. Inside of these four or five minutes, I do, of course, uh, intervals. Normally, uh, nowadays, when I'm practicing, um, I, I, sometimes I do the, the idea of uh, singing and then playing, singing and, and then playing. So. With that, I, I always have someone playing with me. With, with that said, I always have space for my lips rest. Okay. We're going to do now that exercise here. It's a combination between the articulation. So simple tone here, triple tone here, and double tone here. I use it. It's because it's related of the way uh, it's related on uh, the way that I'm, I'm speaking with you guys. Okay. So let's do in B flat. It's easier. <laughs> Today's Saturday. Let's be easier with uh, ourselves. <laughs> okay. okay. One, two, up. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
told Jason, now is the only exercise that I, I, I miss the, the metronomy, to be honest. Because I started to play and then in the, in the second, third position, I, I discovered that I, oh, I'm slowing down a bit. So I'm not focusing too much in the articulation, the sound itself. But yes, everything that we played here, play with the metronomy, at least uh, one day and another, and another day. Sorry, sorry, I need to, to put my... Jose, uh, Jason, did you have a question? Or I, I wanted to ask Jose, how fast do you normally uh, work your sing single tonguing up to? I notice your exercise there is at 80. Um, my my uh, my teacher uh, put on a metronome at 132 and wanted me to single tongue sixteenth notes. Uh, he says he practices at 144. Uh, yes, I. You know, <laughs> uh, it's a really good, nice question, and uh, I, I I'm gonna put it that way. I work a lot in my single tongue because this is it's like I told before. Uh, it's not my my best point of my playing the articulation yeah so i let, let me just just check that but i think i do something like this as well I, i'm unfortunately or fortunately uh through covid playing duets with a trumpet player who likes to play herbert l clark duets so i'm seeing a lot of double chunging and triple tonguing that i was always trying to avoid <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I, I also like you. I try to avoid. I use in the very fast uh, situations. Uh, yes. Something like. Okay, this is yeah. the double tone, but uh, yeah. things like. This is one or two. Uh, one. Let me put in one. I, I actually I never measured that to be honest. Yeah. It surprised me. It, was, it caught me off guard, but now I have something to work towards. <laughs> yeah, it's it's quite fast for my. I, yeah. I know that. Yes, I can. It's one four four uh, one five zero maybe. Yes, I can do, but it's 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 risky now. You know. Yeah. It's, that's no, why we I, practice. I, we got to take yeah, risks. But, but I like it to do everything in the in the in the simple tongue. Actually, uh, things in the orchestra that normally guys play in the double tongue, and normally I'm doing in the simple tongue. Uh, normally. Very good. Yeah. Uh, for example, this, I saw some guys lo doing. For example, this, uh, I saw some guys that. I know that some guys play this in a double tongue. I, for me, it doesn't make any sense. Mm. Uh, for me, of course. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, you have to work up to it, and clearly you have done the work. So. Yeah, <laughs> but it's, I, I, for me, it's, it's a, a matter of not hit the back of the tooth yes. too much. Yeah. It's a, yes. a matter of be gentle, I'd say. Yeah. Just a idea to sort of jump out along that, because I know that I, I lived in UK for a while, and I know there's some discussion about some of the players there doing this. They'll like set a metronome and then do like one minute of just straight 16 single tongues at a certain tempo. And then, you know, uh, every week you can nudge it one bump faster. But I know that um, I don't want to quote the player who, who told me this, because, well, I'm not 100% sure if this is attributed to him or just I heard it about him, but. Apparently he can like like single tongue like stuff like like Bluebells of Scotland or Scheherazade or stuff like that and his single tongue was so fast. I started doing this a little bit during the pandemic and I thought it helped my general articulation just because when I had the tongue so fast, the tongue had to become relaxed. So yeah. maybe there's some ideas we can take from this or use. I think this is the main idea to be honest. I I I I I I would say that uh uh, one thing that I, I, I've learned from, from Peter Ellipson. So the, once you get old, we lost uh, the ability to to be fast in your single tongue. So if you, as, as in the young age, you try to, to do that as much as you can and hit that problem with a young age, when you become older, you start to minimize that, you know? Um, it's put more in very, you know, far away to, to be a problem. Um, 
I agree with him because I'm okay. I'm not old, but if I compare myself, uh, I mean, ten years ago, I did very. I, I I'm avoiding playing with double, triple tones things. Nowadays, I'm using more, but it's still a fast uh, uh, single tone. So uh, I, I mean, it's it's I I. I, I worth a try at least it's it's good to 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 know how to do it you know to play in a single very good single tone fast as you can just to make sure that you don't have any problems and yes it helps i agree with that quote david it works a lot with uh, the double and single tone actually one of the things that i i've learned with my research about articulation is uh you need to have one that it's like a a, um, a a good one just to copy the sensation. For me, at least works. I, I, I would say that my legato tongue, it's I can't I can't handle with my legato tongue. So I try to copy the sensation for the another kinds of articulations. So it's works for me. Yeah, I was um, I was just going to say, actually, so um... David, that UK player that you're referring to, that's actually straight from Herbert L. Clark. Uh, he used to do a one minute exercise and basically ratchet up like the tempo, like one click, like a, like a week or whatever. And just that slow longitudinal development of single tonguing, right? Um, and, and Jose and to, to Martin's you know, question, over this past, uh, you know, past couple of years, I've actually been experimenting and charting out how fast can I do 16th notes on this note? How fast can I do 16th notes on that note? If I play four 16th notes, I can do it at this tempo. If I play eight 16th notes, I can do it at that tempo. And the chart kind of looks like a bell-shaped curve. There's like a mid-register where the, the tongue is really the biggest fat, like the tongue and the air coordination, whatever, you know, is, is, is what the factors are. When you get to the extremes, you know, if you start to squeeze it all, or if you have range or stability issues, or if the tongue is like too, too involved in the low register, it's obviously going to be slower. And if you're doing like six beats of 16th notes, you're not going to be able to go as fast. Um, but it is, it's trainable and you do lose it when you get older. But I think you're absolutely right, Jose. Um, wherever you are, whether it's 120 beats a minute or 160 beats a minute or whatever, uh, you can develop it and it is important to develop it so that you can keep what you have. Um, and it, it does kind of affect all of your articulation. You know, it will affect the legato, it will affect double tonguing. Jose, to, to specifically to your exercise, one of the biggest challenges that I had was going from triple tongue to double tongue. Um, when I was doing the da 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 and then when I tried to go da 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 my 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 tongue didn't want to go. It was like doing the double tongue rhythm with the triple tongue, and it was like confusing. So I'm gonna have to practice that. That was really great. Thank you for sharing that. And actually, this is why I do that exercise like this because for me it's the same. I when the first time that I did with with this is I I I stole it from Peter Ellison. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I'm joking. Of course, I'm, I I copied from him. And uh, I, the first time that I that I did that with him, I was like, okay, I can't. I, I if I put the double tongue alone, it's it's okay. The triple tongue alone, it's okay. But if you put the the double tongue and then the triple tongue, it's okay. But if I do a triple tongue and double tongue, it's a it's a mess. So let's do it. <laughs> I always like that to to work, you know. Um, one thing that I, it's important for me in terms of articulation. Um, you know, I'm going to play one thing for you guys. It's really Brazilian music. Uh, it's a choro called Na Gloria. Uh, and I'm going to play that because I, I like this song, but also because I discovered uh, that simple uh, melodies like that. It's, I mean, it's not that simple, but it's simple in a way because uh, it's in F major. It's really simple uh, rhythms. I can use a very loose, um, not loose, but an easy articulation. No, because it's uh, 
it's a, a melody that we I, I grew up listening not that melody but samba for example um, it's it's I mean Brazil <laughs> we listen a lot of that uh, and I, and I, I try to copy that when I'm playing a normal stuff uh, orchestra stuff the sensation of this kind of music <laughs> see I, I try to copy the articulation that I'm doing that and you can see I'm, I'm, I, I felt my articulation easy I don't know if it sounds like that but I felt easy and uh, if I put that that I, idea if I do if it's gonna be something like this and uh, one strategy that I, I like to share is something like this try to find something that's easy for you and uh, try to copy <laughs> the easiness the easiness that you 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 felt when you play um, you know uh, for example I have some students that had some problems with legato and I asked him to play his favorite songs and uh, doesn't have problem at all so you need to copy that that sensation and I think this this kind of uh, articulation uh, problem is because we are thinking too much in how to put the tone to work instead of how to sound like with that. Uh, this is my opinion, of course, but uh, I think for me, this kind of, of, of playing, uh, there is a, um, a thing that uh, it's also more, more clear with that for example i use that articulation for playing things um, like him ah sorry <laughs> the positions <laughs> the auto trouble <laughs> It's it's calming and the, oh yeah thank you I, it's there also I, I have my auto but I, <laughs> I was, I, I, Jose I, I, I was just gonna say when you articulate quickly there is so much tone still in the notes and I'm gonna I, I think I'm gonna like my my five year to do list is gonna be to try to work on that because it, it's really impressive the way that you like when even when you're going fast and you know staccato and secco and all that. There, there's just so much resonance in tone. It's really great. Thank you. Yes, but it's a lot of work. I can say that. It's a lot of work. Uh, I'm not kidding. It's my, if I compare with my high anger range, with my low range, with my, I know, uh, sound producing, articulation is the worst. But it's a lot of work. It's, I, I mean, a lot of work. It's good to listen to that. <laughs> I cannot lie, but it's uh, it's a lot of work. And uh, uh, listen, I, I'm trying to copy what I'm sounding. What I'm, I'm ha the sound it has in my mind, I try to put outside of my bell. Uh, uh, you know, I'm going to show you guys one thing. This is my old instrument. And uh, uh, that instrument helps me a lot in terms of uh, learning how to articulate because there's one thing in comb that I really enjoy. This is a comb, 888H, HGG with uh, the green hole valve. It's uh, a, a really fine instrument. Uh, uh, but with the articulation, there is a thing that helps me. Uh... <laughs> okay, I'm going to uh, answer that uh, afterwards. Uh, my, my, my that that combination it's really good because there is some ring in the articulation so i try to cop that also <laughs> it's 
not that good, but but I, I uh, at the, the beginning, let's try the beginning. Dun, dun, I felt very. Dun, dun, da, da, dun, da, da, da. It's the only thing that I really is still like in that instrument. And then when I play my time, I I try to cop that, and the, the sensation for me it's again related to the simplest thinking, which is singing. Dun, dun, da, da, dun, da, da, dun, da. That's the sensation. <laughs> For me now, I, I can have the control of the articulation. This is, uh, it's funny because that instrument, the con, uh, for me, it's their easiest articulation and this not that much, but the rest in that, it's good in the rest of that, oh, could be better. You know, it's it's funny, but I I, um, I try to relate that. And uh, uh, by the way, the question was, uh, what kind of mouthpiece I use and the, the time trombone that I have? Yes. Uh, this this mouthpiece is from Mart. No, sorry, it's uh, it's from the the space. No, I'm sorry. It's I, I do this this key, this joke with my my students. It's not that it's not that special. It's a bar five G. Really common. And in my time, it's a bel canto model uh, with screw screw bell, gold brass bell. It's and a narrow slide. It's exactly. The same instrument, of course, is is for another brand. Is that that's the point? Um, the difference is between both instruments. Um, it's of course the screw bell add a lot of projection, and uh, it's a two piece bell. Uh, and I, I like I like to I like to think that it's only a two piece bell, not a screw bell. Because this, it's sometimes the guys, ah, the screw bell, we add more resistance. Yes, we add, because we have more weight in the, in the instrument. But I don't think this is uh, that much, that much, to be honest. And, uh, and I think it's, it's, it's really worth the, 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 the qualities that we add. It's worth the, the extra weight. Uh, the, the first thing is projection. We don't need to, to think, worry about any more about projection. And the second thing about the articulation itself, it's more centered. Uh, the thing that I need to, I still need to understand more. It's the, that I don't, I, 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 I don't need to help the instrument with that instrument here. I need to help a little bit with that one. I actually it's, it's the opposite, you know? Uh, but that, I mean, but it's, it's really simple. It's not big. It's not, a, it's not, um, not that special to be honest. I just posted that, uh, Matthew Walker, who, uh, makes M and W, uh, had a, he, and used to work for Greenho. We had a great conversation with him about screw bells and one piece bells and two piece bells. And we really went, we did a, a deep dive on that topic. So if people want to go check that video out, it's up on the webpage. I know, I, I, I would like to change to, to, to see that what he's wants to say that it's, it's interesting. I mean, for me, uh, my sensation uh, nowadays, nowadays, I don't felt much difference. In the beginning, yes, I felt, I felt like, ugh. It's something different, but it's not, it's more related to here than here, you know, for me. It's not, uh, you know, uh, some guys are saying that uh, one piece bell sounds freely than uh, two piece bells uh, and uh, even more freely than a screw bell. I, I don't think so. It depends on another, a lot of uh, components. I mean, for example, I, of course, I have a lot of resistance because um, I use narrow slide. With narrow, we have some cushion in the sound. You know, it's like a with light wide slide, it's more freely. So the slide also makes a lot of difference. The color of slide. Uh, I mean, there's it's not the bell itself makes difference. Yes, makes, but I think there is a lot of uh, things that we had we need to to change first before the slide. <laughs> <laughs> oh, before the bell, sorry. Yeah, I was just going to say, um, 
Good to see you, Rob. But uh, I, I was just going to say, I don't think a, a committee has ever said, you know, it just sounds like they're playing a two-piece bell, so let's pick the other player. It just, it, it just, it usually just doesn't come down to that. It usually comes down to other aspects of their playing, you know. So yeah, if you're doing the right things going into the horn, you'll get good things coming out the other end. Yeah, the biggest piece of equipment is what's attached to the mouthpiece on on the backside. <laughs> this is the phrase, man. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, that's it, right? You know, I, I have I don't know in, in your places, guys, but guys, but in Brazil, uh, I have a lot of criticism uh, with brass playing and uh, uh, in general, especially with the trumpet players. In Brazil, we have like uh, amazing trumpet players, amazing trumpet players, but they always dive in some fights in between the normal instruments and monet. Ah, my God, it sounds great. Sounds great with Monet, with uh, the, the Chinese instruments. Sometimes Chinese is not that good, but the, I mean, dep it depends of the instruments. If you sound great, it will be sound great. Depend of the trumpet, depend of the instrument. And sometimes this got me furious. Nowadays in Brazil, uh, I, I it's funny because I'm using time because I like time, not because I, I'm with the fashion. I try it three times before. Uh, buying my 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 instrument and uh when i i, I bought that I, coincidentally in brazil we started a, a time fashion everyone wants to have a time brazil and uh and it was like uh, the people were asking me ah you buy because it's now the 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 trombone of the of the moment no i bought a box because I, I want to buy that instrument since from the beginning i, I mean i I don't have any complaints with that. I, I like to, to give a shot for at least five years or some more. I mean, I really enjoy, I really enjoy uh, another brands. I, I played for 10 years, 12 years in my cone. I still have in my cone. I never, I, I'm not bought that, I sell that instrument. And, uh, uh, but I, I really enjoy Cortoa. I really enjoy shares. I, I enjoy great instruments, but the phrase is that, the quote is that the piece, uh, the piece before the mouthpiece makes the difference in the instrument. Okay. Well, this has been fantastic, Jose. It's it's just so wonderful that you've been able to, you know, willing to, you know, just share some of uh, your your I don't want to say your secrets, but your philosophies behind how you're practicing and how you're, uh, you know, developing your own sense of play. And it's 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 really inspiring to hear not only you know your sound and your playing. Uh, but also how you're working to achieve that. So we just we can't thank you enough for sharing with us. And I think I speak for everyone here when you know we all hope we get to hear you live in person, and maybe we all get to like say hello at uh, whether it's at a ITF conference or you know something else, another performance. But um, if you if you wouldn't mind, um, why don't you take a moment and maybe tell us some things that you have coming up that you're excited about, whether it's a collaboration online or a CD recording, or if you're doing any touring. I think we'd love to just hear what you're up to and uh, maybe get a chance to, to hear more of you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Once again, thank you very much for the invitation for allow me to share my, my thoughts with the, that guys. It's, it's amazing. Uh, you know, now I, um, I, I think April and May, I, I don't have much to do, although I have some small collaborations. Uh, and in this month, I will be in the slide school, uh, sharing some thoughts. Uh, oh, thank you, Martin. Thank you. Uh, uh, I mean, I'll be doing some master class in, in the slide school with Nathan Singok and Brian Hatch uh may i have some some small collaborations but that, i i i did on purpose that i stayed like to gen from from december to march written my uh master dissertation and uh, i had to do that and uh, it's like uh, my, my work is about collaboration between interpret and composer and interpreter and, perf and performer and um and uh, this is my main goal right now. And um, uh, I, I think and at the end of the month, I'm gonna launch uh, those pieces. There is everything is recorded, but because of the master uh, regulation, I need to do my, my defense. You know, we have to present for the, the jury, my, 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 my work. And since this 
over, I will present this this video. And it's a, it's, it's a brief com a documentary uh, between the relationship uh, uh, between composer and, and performer. And I'm going to uh, premiere one piece for a solo trombone, a, a trombone and an accompaniment trombone and uh, and uh, trombone and piano. It's really nice pieces. Uh, and uh, it's going to be awesome, but this piece starts uh, the project that I'm going to launch, I hope so, in 2022. It's my second CD, um, uh, but I'm going to I'm going to show the CD. I, I'm going to record and then put it on Spotify and stream. And then I, when I finish my the five pieces, I'm going to going to launch. This is the first thing uh, I'm involved with some uh, a, a new project of uh, uh, Tromon uh, online course, although I don't like much this. I, I need I, I it's it's good to do some steps I I, I you know I'm very uh, I like to to have the person in person work you know that's why I I, I understand guys that makes this but I'm more like a young bouncer, I would say I, I don't I don't think it's helpful to have some some information on the internet but uh, online teaching uh like 100 online teaching and i don't think it's it's really good i think it's a balance it's like a hybrid work it's can can be great but uh, for a music for a musician we need to listen to each other in life you need to know how to sound like the instrument in front of you so this is but I, i'm gonna do my online online course is gonna be bilingual is gonna be uh, English Portuguese so it's gonna be nice the first the first uh, season is gonna be more for for beginning students I'm gonna explain how to hold the instrument but the next season I, I think the next year is gonna be more related to to preparation I like to do things uh, in, in the thing that I, I, I accepted to do this 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 online courses I'm gonna do some um, workout programs like uh, articulation programs. I, I'm gonna uh, show some exercise that I like to do and uh, put together and play together with the people that give me space for the people play with me. It's another option. I, I, I know that Peter Steiner did that and I, I really enjoyed this. Uh, a lot of guys are doing something like this and uh, this it's okay for me, but I don't think um, um this is good but not online 100 percent online lesson is is nice and for i i mean i have some i, I hope being in the itf in this year but i i think it's going to be complicated because of the, the the situation here in brazil but if i'll be in, in in the itf i'll be playing with only in the uh, in the um, symposium for a uh, chore i'm not playing solo or not nothing like this but i i yes um i was invited for another another itf in a couple of years i'll be in another itf in 2024 for sure i'll be there and uh but it, anyway i i think this is the big plan for this year i have some auditions that i i want to do let's see let's see depending of the the the, the, the thing is but I, I'm more interested in, in develop I, I think the main pro program that I that I want to do is develop my my favorite playing which is uh, new compositions and uh, I, I really enjoy that really enjoy really enjoy the collaboration between composer and, and the performer and probably what I'm gonna a post on Instagram, Facebook, and ev everything is is more related on it. It's more, it's more and more. I, I, I before that, I have another pro uh, project with five composers. Uh, they invited me to be one of the players, and then uh, it, they gonna write uh, five pieces for trombone and piano. And uh, but the pieces uh, is gonna be in a way cool. Uh, composition so they gonna give me the part and then I'm gonna finish some parts and uh, this is one thing that I'm 
I, I'm, I'm excited for it. I, uh, I don't know what's going to happen because, you know, who knows? I, I'm, I'm not a composer, but this, this, guy, this kind of thing is going to be interesting, you know? And that's it. I'm, I'm, and uh, of course, try to survive at this COVID. <laughs> well, it sounds like you're definitely keeping busy, which is great. Yeah. And we all, you know, we're all trying to do that, you know, in our own way. So, so that's good. That's good. Well, mm -hmm. we, we look forward to, uh, we look forward to seeing uh, seeing your work. I'm sure we'll see you all. For those of you that are on social media and on the internet, it's it's not hard to find Jose, and I'm sure you'll 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 keep finding more uh, more great contributions from him. Uh, I'm excited to hear these pieces. Um, anytime somebody's writing new stuff for the trombone with a great trombonist in collaboration, uh, the results are usually um, you know pretty inspiring. So very exciting, very exciting. Yeah, well, I'm excited too. yeah. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in. And we'll catch you next time. We've got some stuff on the, we've got some people coming up on the website. I think we're, you know, booked all the way through April, uh, May, and then into May. Uh, we've got some people lined up. So uh, yeah, should be some exciting time. So thanks. We'll see you all later. Thank, thank you very much, you guys, for the invitation. And I hope to catch you guys as soon as possible. Okay. Yes, absolutely. We'll catch you on the flip side. Bye-bye, my friend. <laughs>